I'm gonna need the glasses for this one to read this comment. There's a lot we've gotta cover for me to be able to tackle the topic of this video. I made a video called, Do I Show Empathy for Mexicans and Mexican Americans? A Libertarian Point of View. And Miguel Gonzalez, who had inspired the video that caused me to make that video, who by the way, I have to brag on, one of the most faithful viewers of my channel. I think Miguel watches every single video I do and comments on every single one. He's very dedicated to this channel, so thank you for your contributions, and let's be honest, you are the reason I make certain videos that other people are very engaged in, and I've stated recently on my thousandth video, what matters to me on this channel is that I am engaging. I don't care that people perceive me that I'm ignorant, wrong, or immoral. As long as I'm perceived as engaging, well, it doesn't really matter if people perceive me that way. As long as I perceive that I'm engaging, then I feel that that speaks to the identity of this channel. So here's the comment. Let's dive in. Quote, it may all come down to ethics and even religion, but let's not divert the discussion to other topics. Let's focus on DNA and culture. The direction this channel is taking, let's think of how is the world changing with the use of DNA data. Thanks to the new information we're all receiving when we, when we run our saliva through tests that will determine our ancestry, we can pinpoint places and most importantly people. You can find distant relatives and in this specific context, Nick, did you find your Native American relatives? What do you do with this info? Could you consider them to be part of your family or turn your back as a good social climber would do? And only try to assimilate to the dominant culture which has pros and cons. The cons would be to adopt a non-religious posture of selfishness. It seems most people do this. Can you feel fine when your relatives are picking up oranges? What do you tell your own children? We all expect them to become president. We all can try to have good intentions but end up patronizing without knowing. Will you meet your Native American relatives in the future? That would be a challenge. Or are you not interested since you have renounced and negate that part of your roots? That's comfortable, but is it morally acceptable? Your own moral, of which you seem to be proud of, but may crumble against this dilemma. The solution of this problem is complex and will ask from us a deep understanding of the world and decide if to save yourself and ignore your own extended family is better." End quote. So that's getting really deep. Uh, maybe a little bit deeper than uh, I even intended for this to go, uh, but that's okay because I'm up for the challenge and now I can take the glasses off because the selfie cam is making such a glare that, there we go. So ultimately what we're, what's being asked is now that technology has, has allowed for it, in theory, when I, because I took my test through MyHeritage, it automatically populates a lot of the people that I'm related to. And if I were to scroll through like, you know, page 52, Oh, it's my 52nd cousin in, uh, in Michoacan, Mexico, or wherever they may be. And then I could look them up, even though I can't speak Spanish, use Google Translate. All right. Would I see them as my family, or would I simply just think they don't matter? They're not. All they need to do is pick oranges and take the jobs that no one else wants here in America. So let them move up to the United States, go to Florida, California, and, and pick fruit because. People who were born here in the United States aren't willing to do that job, but the illegal undocumented immigrant workers will, or go to the Carolinas and slaughter cattle and chickens, because again, people here born in America won't do that. They'll go on disability uh, or unemployment or something like that. They'll find a way not to, to, to do those jobs. So do I, do I turn my back on those relatives if I met them? Uh, and it's been said in the comment that I have already distanced myself from them. I am confused by that comment because I feel personally that this channel is based on the fact that they exist. I think that to me that's one of the most fascinating things about the DNA test is to consider that according to my own test through my heritage, I'm somewhere between 20 and 25% Native American. So according to that test alone, knowing that my maternal grandmother was 100% of Mexican descent, I definitely feel connected to people from there. So whether I'm actually related to them doesn't matter to me. For me personally, I've, and I've said this in many videos, I've always felt 
personally connected to Mexican people. And now we're talking about Native American, so let's shift the conversation there. Let's talk about Ecuador. In 1998, I went on a missions trip through my church to Ecuador and I spent about 10 days there. I was 17 years old in the summer of 1998. And it was the first time I flew out of the country at age 17, went to Ecuador. And no, I didn't speak any Spanish, only a little bit of French from my year of French I'd taken at that point. What did I do there? Uh, we were helping rebuild some schools and build some schools. So part of our team did that. Uh, specifically because as we all know, I have the gift of communication as a 17 year old, this was basically 20 years ago uh, that this happened. Uh, I was part of a group that uh, kind of like run a, a summer camp for kids. So playing soccer with them, helping tell stories, uh, puppet shows in the park, things like that. That's the kind of thing I did. You know, basically helping entertain and engage people who, kids who otherwise wouldn't have something to do. They come to this camp, this church or the park or whatever. And that's what I did. But people my, on my team, what they were doing, they were also building schools and helping build homes, putting new roofs on, all that stuff. So that's the kind of stuff we were doing. The reason this is relevant is when you look at the DNA of people from Ecuador, and when I think of people from Ecuador, even before I went there, because my dad went there in 1987 when he was with, with the National Guard. So 10 years prior, 1987, he'd been there. He, he brought all these pictures. He loved those people. He thought it was amazing. And that affected me in a good way. 10 years later, 97, I ended up going there, feeling the same way. These people are awesome. I love these people. I can't speak their language. They can't speak mine, but I love these people and I love this place. So it doesn't matter to me whether or not I'm actually related to them, but I definitely feel a connection because yeah, a decent amount of my DNA is shared with them being Native American. Specifically though, Ecuador, correct me if I'm wrong, everyone in the world, but when you look at countries in South America, and Central America, etc., all the countries below the United States border, typically, and I know Uruguay, exception to the rule, but for the most part, you're gonna have people that have a lot of Native American DNA, but specifically Ecuador, has a much higher percent of Native American DNA and much lower percent of European DNA, which therefore is that much more reason why I feel that if we're looking at DNA alone, the part of me that is from, descended from Mexico is very like them. Now, my maternal grandmother's family had came from, their side of the family had came from uh, Michoacan, Mexico, which that part of Mexico has less European DNA and more Native American. In the same way that Ecuador, similar, similar ratio. So it doesn't matter that I was actually related to any of them. I love those people. I cared about those people. I felt connected to those people, but really the fact that I shared DNA or whatever, that wasn't even it. I mean, yes, that's true and I felt that way, but even if I didn't, I'd still feel the same way because I love those people. I felt the same way when I went to Trinidad. I felt the same way when I went uh, to Thailand. Specifically, those countries really stand out. I, there are certain other groups of people that you just feel connected to, whether you share DNA with them or not. So that's my response uh, as far as who should pick fruit and, and who shouldn't. I think that's a very political question, and I think it goes back to the economy and the free market and what the United States is willing to allow on uh, treating uh, Mexican Americans, especially undocumented ones, as second-rate citizens. That's how I feel. They were, they're treated in the background and we don't really notice them because we're, and, and I say we, but that's not me. I always feel connected and I speak with them when I see them. I make, I wave at them. I make conversations with them. So that's how I feel. I feel it doesn't matter who you are, how important you think you are, or how unimportant you think you are, I believe everyone should be treated equally. That's very important to my identity. So there's the 10 minute video, there's the response. I definitely welcome the comments right here. So there's your 10 minute response. That concludes the video. Has it been 10 minutes yet?
Okay, now it has. Okay, so here's the bonus footage. I need to go ahead and make this disclaimer now that the real video ended. I already know that people, it's very important you watch my videos. They want to prove that I'm wrong, ignorant, or immoral. And something I've learned is anytime I talk about the fact that I have been on many foreign mission trips, people like to really point out how immoral I am for that. And they say that I'm selfish and that I only did that to try to convert people to Christ and that I basically I'm a bad, selfish person because I did that. So if that's something you feel that you want to say, I guess I just went ahead and took the lines from it. But you can go ahead and say it again if that's important to you to say that. But I went ahead and gave you a script right there. So you can put that right there and make that whole deflection of the video instead of focus on what I actually talked about. So you get to do whatever you want to do. You're in charge. Comments right here or right here.